Secretary of State Special Service Recreation meeting. Give me just a second here. All right, I call to order the city council meeting for Wednesday, July 26, 2023. All members of the city council are present. Uh, Mayor Burton's joining us electronically. We have our council office staff, various members of the mayor staff and the public here as well. First item of business for city council is the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by Greg Davenport. Mr. Davenport. Would the audience please rise? I pledge the allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Davenport. We will now move to citizen comment. This is the opportunity for the public to share anything that you would like the city council to hear. It does not have to be on the agenda tonight. It could be anything under the sun, preferably something over which the city council has authority. Um, if you wanted to talk about fairway estates as well, this would be the time to do so. Um, those who are online, if you would please hit the little button to raise your hand to indicate that you'd like to speak. Um, we will, however, start with the folks who are here in the room. Uh, Everyone will have, everyone who wishes to speak may have up to three minutes to do so. Typically, the city council doesn't engage in back and forth. We're, it's citizen comment time, public comment time. That means city council listening time. So we'd like to hear what you have to say. If there are specific questions, we may direct you or connect you with the right member of staff to fully answer those questions. But more than anything, we'd like to hear your thoughts. With that said, anybody who would like to speak, please come to the podium. We'd ask that when you get there, hit the little uh, button on the right, that'll turn the microphone right. Oh, looks like it's already on. So just state your name and if you're a resident of West Jordan, and then we'll start the timer for three minutes. My name is Mickey Phelps. I am a resident of West Jordan. I live in Copper Valley Estates, and I'm coming to you in regards to a gas station that they're putting up on 56th uh, West and 80th South, something like that. And, um, it's where the overpass is going over Mountain View. Uh, I recognize that you can't fight City Hall, but I also recognize that City Council have ears. And so I would like you to hear what I have to say. The overpass is bad enough, and that's not why I'm here, but that's going to create traffic problems for us. The gas station is going to exacerbate it with people trying to get in and out from a not a great location. In addition, there are already three gas stations, four gas stations within a mile of that spot, within a mile, a quarter mile or less for one of them. That's not needed and it's not wanted. We don't want the noise. We've heard there did a noise study, which anybody who has been to a gas station knows that it's useless. They've done a light study and anybody who's been to a gas station at night knows that you can see it from a mile away. That light's gonna shine into windows, no matter if their study said that it's gonna be zero at their perimeter. They even said, when it's zero, it doesn't mean you don't see it. It just means it's zero. We got kids in a school across the street. We have a school zone, which is going to create the traffic that's going over that bridge in both directions during rush hour when the kids are getting out. We have a gas station where those fart boxes that race along 56th are going to congregate basically in somebody's backyard. Now I'm six feet tall, a little more, and that's how tall the wall is gonna be between the gas station and somebody's backyard. This is a bad idea. Nobody in the neighborhood wants it. We have an HOA that says if there's gonna be something that lowers our property value, you can't do it. But they have no control over that gas station coming in and lowering our property value. Oh, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Again, your name and if you're a resident of the city and then you'll have three minutes. 
Sure. Hi, I'm Amanda Phelps. Uh, I also live in Copper Valley Estates, and I get the benefit of twice as long as he had because I agree with everything he said. And then um, I, I would like to point out that uh, they're on 5600 near New Bingham Highway at the at the intersection where the, the high school is in the morning hours when the kids are are. Uh, commuting to school and when they're leaving school. Uh, we, my husband and I in particular, because we our lot backs up to 5,600 West, uh, we get the benefit of seeing the accidents that happen and the, and the backup of the traffic there that happens. And when we're turning out onto 5,600 West during those times, that traffic is just terrible. And sometimes we have to sit there and wait for a light to change before we can actually try and safely pull out and a lot of times we're pulling out into that center lane and waiting for traffic to clear before we can actually pull into it um, and so the i don't i don't trust that studies that have been made i don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist but somebody else paid for those studies i didn't and i don't have deep enough pockets in order to pay for those studies not the not the traffic studies not the noise studies and not the light studies. Um, I am very concerned about the, the height, the six foot height of the wall requirement between the gas station and our subdivision. Um, on my way here tonight at 7,800 uh, south and about 32nd west, there's, um, there's a, 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 a a preschool that has a lovely, and it appears to be an eight foot fence. I, I would have, to, I, I would, I'll go back and take pictures for you if you'd like it to see, to, to see it. You can still see that there's a playground and a school on the other side of the wall. It's not blocking anything, but I do believe that it gives a, a, a greater sense of security on the other piece, uh, on, on the other side of the wall. Something that would enable people to, um, to feel safer in their homes and in their backyards with their children in their backyards, and also um, meet the need of, of, of the boundary that needs to be made. Um, I don't know about sound. I wish that I had a better option. Landscaping, trees help with that. Maybe some taller trees, and that could help mitigate the light coming from the gas station as well. I would rather not see that gas station there, but I don't feel like I have that choice. I wish I did, and I wish I felt like somebody was giving me a choice. That's all, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else who'd like to speak to the council tonight? I'm Anne Marie, and I'm the manager of the Bingham Creek Library here in West Jordan City. Um, I am just here to say how much we love being part of the West Jordan commute community. Um, we've been having a wonderful time with summer reading. If you guys haven't had a chance to sign up or any of you haven't, um, it's for all ages, zero to as old as you can get. Um, we are still doing signups for it clear through the end of this month. So stop into one of our branches, West Jordan right here next door or Bingham Creek, which is a little further west or any of the county libraries if one of them is more convenient to you. It's a really fun program. Um, and we'd love to see as many people in our community uh, participate as possible. It's really fun. We also have a super exciting celebration coming up for the Bingham Creek Library that I just wanna highlight briefly. August 9th, uh, we are doing the 25th anniversary celebration of the Bingham Creek Library being uh, at our current location in West Jordan. It is so wonderful that we've been here that long and we are gonna have all sorts of uh, fun presenters. Uh, Copper Hills High School Marching Band is gonna be there for a little bit for that. Uh, we also have crafts, activities. We're gonna do scavenger hunts, a little bit of geocaching for those who feel comfortable doing that. Uh, we have some people coming to cosplay. It's gonna be awesome and tons of fun from one o'clock to four o'clock in the afternoon on August 9th. And we hope to see all of you there, but we recognize some of you are really busy. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you for letting us be part of your community. It's a wonderful community to be a part of. Thank you, Emma Marie. And I will point out that having that celebration from one to four still leaves plenty of time to get here to city council by six so people could do both. Is there anyone else in chambers that would like to address city council before we go to those who are online? 
All right, I'm not seeing anyone else here. So again, if you're online and would like to speak to city council, please hit the little icon to raise your hand. We'll start with Mr. Wilkinson. Uh, if you would, again, uh, please share your name, city of residence, and then you'll have three minutes. I'm Mr. Anderson. I Could you switch and make me co-host so that I can allow them to speak? Sorry, we'll give it just a second here. There you go. All right, Mr. Wilkinson, you should be able to unmute yourself and introduce yourself, and then we'll start the timer with the three minutes. Uh, yes, I'm Ryan Wilkinson. I live in West Jordan. Just, uh, I'm going to, going to divert from my prepared remarks here to those people who just spoke about the gas station. Hey, the city council, they don't give a crap about ambient environmental noise in their community. I've been fighting this fight for well over a year concerning the airport. They do not care. At the very least, the gas station gives them a little bit of a, a, a some, some tax revenue. The airport does not. So good luck. Please contact me. I will have your back in this fight. And I have some information if you want. Ryan Wilkinson, I live in West Jordan. Can I give my phone number on here? Yes or no? You're welcome to share that if you'd like to do so publicly. Fantastic. 801-644-8841. Feel free to contact me. Uh, to my remarks on May 24th of this year, I sent an email to all seven members of the West Jordan City Council and to the council comments email address. The email concerned 15 aircraft which were flying well below the federally mandated 1,000 foot altitude directly over your constituents' homes from 6.21 a.m. to 8.29 a.m. After providing detailed information concerning all 15 flights, I asked two very simple questions in the email. First, do you believe these flight operations benefit West Jordan City and its residents? Second, please describe how these flights benefit West Jordan economically. I received no response from any of you. This is seven against one here. I put a lot of time and effort into the email. It's been two months, no response. What's going on? Are you competent or not? I already know the answer. Attempt to prove me wrong if you can. Uh, I can say with near certainty that West Jordan did, uh, did not make a dime off those particular flights. Why it tolerates this problem in its community is a question I've asked for well over a year. I have not received a single rational response because none exists. Uh, Kelvin Green made the argument that the South Valley Regional Airport is of substantial economic value because individuals using the airport might use local restaurants. This is not a valid response particularly when West Jordan leaders have continually argued that the South Valley Regional Airport is a major economic driver for the city. It is not. Receiving a few cents per transaction from the prepared food tax from occasional restaurant visitors is a laughable argument. I have to question why someone would make this argument, thinking this was somehow supportable and valid. So I took a look, glance at Mr. Green's education. According to his West Jordan City bio, Mr. Green attended J.D. Taft Law School. As a practicing attorney myself, this confused me since I had never heard of this particular school. So I visited the school's website and learned that J.D. Taft Law School is principally a correspondence school. Those are their words. It is not accredited by the American Bar Association. Rather, it is accredited by the Distance Education Accrediting Commission. How embarrassing for you, sir. Uh, their goal is to promote education excellence in distance education institutions. This might explain Mr. Green's poor rationale and his laughable arguments. It also explains why Mr. Green Mr. does not Wilkinson, practice law in Utah. Thank you for your comments. Unfortunately, we are at time now. Um, but uh, we do appreciate you using the opportunity to address council. Uh, we will now go on to Lori Taylor. Let me change that to allow you to speak. And again, Lori, if you would, please introduce yourself. Let us know if you're a resident of the city and then you'll have three minutes. Um, I am Lori Taylor. I am a resident of Copper Valley Estates. Um, I am a resident. I am here um, supporting Amanda and her husband. And you guys also spoke to me last week. Um, which I'm grateful for, and thanks for letting me have that time. Um, I'm just here again to <clears throat> ask for some consideration. And I, I know that some of you guys don't have control over this, as David um, Peck had called and told me, um, but I'm hoping I can reach the mayor or someone that's there that's willing to listen. 
first of all, the name of the gas station, come and go. We can have plenty of jokes about that. You have high school students, I'm pretty sure they're gonna have tons of jokes. Um, gas stations is a popular place to have transactions and um, hopefully not drug related, but I'm pretty sure that will happen as well. Um, I used to live in a neighborhood where that happened all the time and hopefully our neighborhood doesn't go that route. Um, and I know we don't have a lot to say on that gas station being there, but I'm hoping that you guys will consider the fact that we need better fencing, eight foot, better trees up there, and just kind of fix the lighting. Um, when we spoke to the planning commission, they told us to speak to the city council. Now the city council is telling me that um, they're not involved. So I'm a little confused as who I need to speak to and where we need to go upon that. And I know we need to appeal it, but I just know we're not gonna win that appeal. So for me, that might be a waste of time. I just want some negotiation between the city and I and the community. So we actually have a good place to live. I mean, I'm really considering selling my home. And for Larry Gardner, who said that it doesn't devalue my property, I actually asked him to come buy my home at full value. Because um, I know once that gas station is going to go there, I'm not going to get as much money as I, I should. And you guys should really want to keep residents that are good citizens that want to be in West Jordan um, to stay here. Otherwise, you're just going to have people that leave and go to different areas that um, are better and just, I don't know, like it, it's, it's heartbreaking to me that I moved here and I want to move just because of the way the city is going. So I just ask that you guys consider our comments. Um, please contact us on how we can get some of this stuff resolved and adjusted. Um, and I hope what that previous member was saying or the community um, guy is not true. And I hope you guys can prove them wrong, prove them wrong that you'll, you'll contact us. That's all I have to say. Thank you for your comments. Let me fix this here real quick. So is there anybody else in the audience who'd like to speak or anybody else online who'd like to address the council during citizen comments? All right, not seeing any, we will close citizen comments. I really appreciate the comment Ms. Taylor made uh, about specifically asking to be contacted. This is, as mentioned, this is usually a time where, where we listen to hear what's being shared. This particular issue goes back to decisions that were made over a decade ago by a prior council. But Mr. Anderson, could you work with Mr. Lee to make sure that every possible avenue is clearly defined for uh, those that spoke here in person as well as uh, Ms. Taylor. And Ms. Taylor, since you're not here in the room, do Alan, do we have her contact information already? I, I don't, but I can I can get it. Okay. I've, I've already had uh, some communication with the Phelps that are here this evening. And then uh, the mayor is aware and, and the administration is aware of the uh, those comments. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. We will move forward to reports to city council, starting with city council reports. Are there members of the city council who have anything to report back on their duties performed over the last, since we met last week? I'm not seeing any lights. Therefore, I will look to Mr. Anderson for the council office report. Thank you. The only thing I have to update the council on is uh, we are uh, took applications for a couple of weeks for the policy analyst to replace Miss Hansen, and all told, we received forty five applications. We did reach out to BYU, uh, the MPA program there, the University of Utah MPA program, Utah State, and their MPA program got on their uh, graduate email list. Uh, we received some applications from ULCT's job bank. Uh, but anyway, we ended up with 45 applicants. I reviewed all of the resumes, cover letters, and their experiences, and we've narrowed it down to 10 of those 45 that we'll be interviewing early next week. And uh, hope to have uh, a new position to replace Miss Hansen here shortly. And that, uh, I think, is all I've got for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. We'll go to the mayor's report. Uh, mayor Burton, I do see that you're online. Looks like uh, you've unmuted your line. Love to hear from you. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank the Phelps and 
continuing for coming and directing it. And I'll make sure that they are required yeah, to. We're, we're having a real hard time hearing you. It's coming across a little bit garbled. All right, let me try speaking to the that may be better. I think that is a no. Let me switch my It's phone. just louder garbled. <laughs> it's louder, but that's all. Let me switch my phone. Okay. 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 Mr. Lee, how about we switch over to the city administrator's report and we'll try coming back to the mayor's report once we're done with yours. Thank you, Chair. I've got a number of reports. Uh, first, I'd like to have uh, Brian Clay give you an update on a few things happening in public works. And uh, our city recorder, Tanji Sloan, give you an update on our dumpster reservation system. And then um, Chris Pangra, our economic development director, has an announcement and report. And, um, and then I'd like to give you an update at the end. Hey, Corbin, if, as, as Tanji's coming up here, can you throw Derek in there so he can tell us about fireworks real quick? Oh, sure. Yep. Thanks, Council Chair and Council. Just a few updates on some construction projects that were uh, that are currently taking place in the city. Um, I'll start with thirteen hundred West, the widening project, Phase One, which is from ninety, roughly ninety four hundred South to ninety South. We have, uh, we got bids back. We have selected the contractor, working through the contract now with them. They will hopefully be mobilizing, well, within the month, um, trying to get uh, Dominion out of the way there, which they should be uh, starting to demobilize in that section and move um, to the north. Um, 8600 South Project, the bridge project is moving forward on schedule. Haven't had many issues there. Um, in-house overlays are going well. We're about halfway through them. Streets Division is, is doing a great job on those. And then also lastly is Google Fiber. Um, that's moving forward. They were able to get into the, our overlay areas before we overlaid so they wouldn't be cut into a new road. Um, so that's moving forward to quicker than kind of what we expected. It's been tough to keep up with them with blue stakes and stuff, but uh, staff doing a great job. So that's pretty much it. Any questions? I just wanted to highlight the planning to do this on the roads that are going to be overlaid before they're overlaid to avoid having an eyesore for the next two decades. Thank you for planning that and sure. putting things in that order. Thanks. Any other questions, comments for Mr. Clegg? All right, Ms. Thun. Thank you, Council Chair and Council. I'm going to give you an update on our dumpster program. It's current, well, it is currently being managed by Public Works, but beginning August 1st, customer service will be managing our dumpster program. We decided to make this move to help provide uh, better customer service because of, we have the bandwidth within customer service to do so. At Public Works, they have two people currently trying to maintain that. So we've moved it to uh, customer service. Um, we get approximately 14 to 16 dumpster requests per day. And that is green waste and trash dumpsters. Um, we're now using Civic Rec, which is a software that we are currently using for rentals of uh, our parks um city buildings and help manage events such as if you want to sign up to be your mutton busting um we're using civic rec now to manage um dumpsters as well so there's a little bit of a learning curve that we're having to do um civic rec allows us to enable our citizens self-service their needs through the customer service department um some of the key features of civic rec are the dumpster management invoicing it does all of our invoicing for us and payments currently um payments for dumpsters are added to our residents utility bills um, that will no longer happen when they decide they want to rent a dumpster and it's approved they will pay for it online with their own debit or credit card instead of us adding it to their utility bill um, 
As the customer service supervisor, it is my goal to come up with ways to foster positive resident interactions and improve the level of customer service to our residents. And I feel like this is a good way to do that by bringing it to customer service where people are giving us money. Um, I feel like it belongs in customer service where we take other payments for other services. So that's just a quick update on that. Does anybody have any questions? Council Member Whitelock? Yes, I do. I, I'll just state I'm a little bit concerned with this because customer service also does passports, which generates revenue. And I would hate us to be having staff work on dumpsters when they could be bringing in revenue, actually. So, so it's a concern. And you don't need to answer. Okay. I am just giving for those others that are a little more in charge than you, some food for thought. The other thing is you mentioned that they'll pay by a credit card. Okay, so I request a dumpster for October 3rd and September 1st, I realize I've already paid for it because I did that today online. Mm -hmm. September 1st, I wanna cancel it. How am I getting my money back? Well, you go in and you, there's a button on the website that you cancel your dumpster reservation. You have to do that cancellation within two days of your reservation of your dumpster. And then you cancel it and then the city re refunds your money. Uh, via sending me a check or? We reverse the charges back, back to, to your card. card. Okay. And what if I'm not comfortable with technology? How do I do this? We have set up a portal inside customer service um, at the counter where there's a computer there and one of our customer service agents will walk through it with you and help you schedule the dumpster rental. Okay. And this is really for you, Mr. Lee. Then what is the person or two people at Public Works that have been doing this for years? Are we getting rid of a staff member so that when Tanji needs another staff member, we've got the funds for that or... What happens to their time now that they're no longer dedicating to that? And I don't want to know that you filled it with something else. I don't like that answer. But but I am curious. I'm, I'm happy to visit with you later on the on the duties of those staff members out of public works. Thank you. Council Member Worthen. No problem, is that? Okay, I was just gonna compliment you. <laughs> Oh, thank you. I've, I've been there during some busy times and I've also had a few people that have interacted with your office and uh, given me a lot of compliments. So I just wanted to, I hope you know you're a rock star. You do a great job. Um, maybe I should have followed Calvin. <laughs> I'm just saying I, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from people that have talked to me and been very happy. I know there are some bumps with the system recently, but even with that, um, they've been very appreciative of your office. So thank you for all you're doing. I think it's, it's a great job, really. Thank you. We have a great customer service passport staff. Well, and they have a great ball. Thank you. Council Member Green. So when you said that you have two day, within two days, is that if I, if I reserve it now, I only have two days to cancel or I reserved it for October 15th, I have to cancel it before October 13th. You have to cancel it two days before October 13th. Okay. And 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 Corbin, this one will be for you as well. Um, when we're attaching the, the dumpster fees to the and and I'm I'm okay with the with the charge of the uh, to, to charge it to a debit or a credit card um, and and get it away from the uh, Utility building, thank you. Uh, what, I, what I'm concerned with is on the utility billing, if they're paying ACH, we're probably not paying a discount fee. And when we, if they charge it through this other website, we're probably paying the discount merchant fees, all those other kinds of things that have, where does that shift the costs and does it create a greater cost for the city that we were anticipating revenue that now we're paying extra money on those discount merchant fees that we hadn't anticipated? We think about that often anytime we're dealing with online payments and credit card payments. 
however, in almost every case, the uh, staff time, the processing, the administrative overhead savings far outweighs the the uh, administrative charges from the third party processor. In this circumstance, we had it on the utility bill, and now we're doing it a, a different way. Is there a, is there a substantial difference in cost? Because both of them would have been automatic. So is there a, is there a substantial difference in cost is my question. I know that Tyler would know that and I can get you an answer to that. I don't know it off the top of my head. I'm sorry. I can let you know what that fee is. All right. Mr. Anderson, can you note that one for follow-up later? Understanding of the fees for the billing changes for dumpster rental. We can add that to Trello. Any other questions for Ms. Sloan? Awesome. Thanks, Thanks Angie. Mr. Pangra. Did I hit the, yep, that's the right one. Well, council, um, I know we've heard consistently from, uh, from most of you, there are three uh, retail targets that all of you would like to see. Would anyone like to recite them? I can recite them. Costco, Trader Joe's, and a steakhouse with an E. It's e A. <laughs> so I, I'm going to I'm going to give you a brief update on the current efforts uh, pursue in pursuit of those. As I've said many times, uh, we keep in periodic uh, communication with the brokers that represent those brands. Uh, those brands are very protective about the identity of the individuals who make the decisions on site selections within every state. Um, but uh, we'll give you a brief overview. Um, we have been in communication with, uh, with the broker for uh, all three, well, for Costco, for Trader Joe's, and uh, for a steak restaurant, one specific one, which is Outback Steakhouse. Um, and what we've been doing is kind of taking a fresh approach to uh, how we're pursuing these. Um, with Costco, they have their site selection criteria as does Trader Joe's. What we've done is we've gone to the broker with a package of several different sites that we believe would be suitable for each of those brands respectively. Um, and uh, uh, sites that we know specifically meet most of their requirements in order to start the conversation. With Costco, I'll mention one thing that's a little bit different because I think we have more opportunity um, because of an asset that we have. We've got that RDA owned land on the north side of 90th. And if Costco doesn't like that site, if that's not appealing to them, it's still an asset that we have. And we've asked them, if you don't like that site, please tell us, is there another site that you like better on vacant land? And that gives us an opportunity to have conversations with different landowners. The interesting thing about Costco, Trader Joe's and, and steakhouses, historically, a lot of communities have used different uh, incentives to pursue, pursue those types of retailers. We really can't do that anymore because of legislation that was passed. And so we're, we're taking a fresh approach to that and putting our best foot forward. And um, we've had some positive conversations. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that Costco, Trader Joe's or the steak restaurant are coming here tomorrow. We're nowhere near that, but we're engaged in meaningful conversation because we know that that's important to you. Tomorrow, no, Friday, yes. <laughs> That's what I heard. I, I can't say that. Uh, the the other uh, news that I have to report to you is, uh, I guess, depending on your perspective, is maybe not. Uh, it, it's news that I give you with uh, mixed emotions, and that is that I've accepted a uh, job as an executive director for a public development authority uh, in the state of Washington. And uh, so it's a, a big move for me and for my family. Um, they recruited me and, uh, I said all the things you never say to a recruiter to let them know I was content where, where I was at and that they couldn't afford me and, uh, you know, all those sorts of things. But, um, much to my amazement, when I asked my family, are you interested in me even having a conversation? It, it's located about, uh, two hours from, uh, from our family cabin on a lake up there. Uh, and, and some acreage that we own. Uh, and we have, my wife has family in Spokane, which is where this would be located. Um, in any case, 
sorry to be reporting that to you, but uh, very much appreciate uh, being able to work with you all over the last three years. I'm proud of what uh, my team has been able to accomplish in that three years, especially through a pandemic. And um, I, I see a bright future for, for West Jordan. And thank you. Councilmember Weidlock. Well, so I was going to start with, it's not us that are asking for those things. It's the community. And I've shared with you more than one Facebook post where, where they, they really want those things in our city. So, so to all those businesses out there, we want you. Um, I don't think your yard's done, though. I don't think you finished it. So, you know, thank you. Thank you for what you've done for our city. And we will miss you. I will miss you. Um, but, you know, two hours from a cabin and near family, I would have said yes, too. But thank you. Well, congratulations. Same thing. That's why I'm moving. It's family. It's just no matter how much you love where you're at, then it's, you know, I was saying earlier, it's it's hard for my husband and I because we've been here almost all of our lives. We love our community. We love the people. But yeah, it comes down to family. So congratulations. That's wonderful. Thank you for all your hard work. And like I said to you earlier, if I didn't like it, it wouldn't harass you. So <laughs> Costco. <laughs> Council member Frank. Thank you for all you've done. Uh, we appreciate your efforts and I wish you the, the best in the, I was going to say, I was going to say uh, rainy Northwest, but I'm not sure it's rainy there anymore. It used to be, but uh, Spokane area is a beautiful area. So you should, uh, you should, uh, in, in hopefully you enjoy that area and best of wishes. <laughs> It's always sad to see somebody leave the city, but at the same time, um, it's exciting to see what's on the horizon for you. And I've been here for, I think, five different economic development directors. And I can tell you without any hesitation that Mr. Pangra has worked harder than anybody else I've seen in this role. When there's been uh, specific things that the council has asked for, he has pushed harder than anybody else I've seen to try and get get to that point when there's been differences of perspective i've never seen anybody work so hard to try and understand where i'm coming from and what exactly i'm looking for um, you're going to be missed uh, you've left some big shoes to be filled and washington is going to be much better off for having you there um, those the city of west jordan i think we should be able to claim some of the credit for any good that comes from mr penger moving up over there so we'll still take that credit chris thank you Right, Mr. Councilmember Pack, your light was on momentarily. No, I was just going to mention, yes, with Mr. Pengra, we've traveled around all of the vacant area of West Jordan out on the west side, right? Especially being in District 4 representing that area. So thank you for giving your candid feedback. I mean, you, me, county representatives, all in the same vehicle, just uh, assessing options and envisioning what could be. So thank you. And also thank you for being, <laughs> uh, for voluntarily staying for a mandatory presentation more than once at about 11 p.m. after a long night of city council <laughs> deliberation, uh, having to deal with uh, the late hour. Thank you and best wishes. And, and Chris, uh, you, the one job I'm gonna get you forgot that, that you forgot that Friday is the grand opening of Boot Barn and Slack Homes in West Jordan. If you're not familiar, Boot Barn is a new uh, retailer out in Jordan Landing, and Slack Homes is a, correct me if I'm wrong, they're a modular home builder. They, they build modular homes, and they've decided to relocate into West Jordan on Airport Road. So those are two significant businesses, I think, that have moved into West Jordan. And so if you had anything to do with those, thank you. Since how you mentioned those, though, we should also say that the Walmart. So you have 11 boot born, Walmart at one, I think, and Slack Homes at four. So <laughs> a lot of new coming. All right. Chief Maxfield. Good evening. I. I will admit I wasn't prepared to report just yet, given that uh, 
fireworks were still legal up until last night. I was going to wait until the whole holiday had passed and compile some statistics for you, which I will still do. I'll still get those to you at a future date. Um, but I am happy to report that in comparison to other years, this was a much quieter year, not just for West Jordan, but throughout the valley. Um, as I listened to the radio the night of the stampede, as well as on the 24th, there was just far less radio traffic than there has been in years past. Um, with that, I think, you know, a lot of that could be attributed to the, the moisture level in the fuels this year, kind of the extended winter we had. But I also want to just thank um, Tani and her team. Uh, they were able to put together a bunch of signs for us that we put up out uh, west of 5600 West, letting residents know. And also Brian and his team, uh, they put up some flashboard signs for us going out that direction on 78th as well as 90th. So that as you entered that 5600 West zone, uh, you were reminded of the restrictions. Um, we did we did get some feedback throughout this season about fireworks. Some people in favor of banning them all. Some people angry at us for banning them to begin with. So, um, but I think from the fire department's perspective, it was it was a good year. We didn't have any major losses, and uh, we're happy with it. So, thank you. Any, any questions? questions? All right. All right. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Lee. Yes. Thank you, Alan. We pull up that slide. Uh, Council, I want to. It's been a few months. I want to give you an update on the community arts center process and where things stand. Uh, back in January, um, we met with you and discussed uh, discussed next steps and how do we bring this project within budget uh, after the pandemic and the cuts to the budget um, and the cuts to the plans. We approved. You approved at that time a proceeding with a simplified design. Uh, at the time, I called it the square box design. We had the uh, majority of the council in favor of proceeding in that direction. We re-engaged over the following months. We re-engaged with the architects who designed the original building, uh, Method Studio, and talked to them about our limited budget, our, our desire for a simplified design, the previous site work that has already been completed, the engineering that's already been completed on the uh, plan for site. Um, they went back and did some uh, estimates and some redrawings to see if we could simplify the building and bring it within budget. Um, then we started meeting with um, our purchasing staff to on how to best proceed with a uh, construction management general contractor process. Um, we have uh, we have gone through an RFP process to find a general contractor. That CMGC process, we selected CERT construction that are under contract. We're meeting with them soon and we'll be um, uh, working with them. I want to show you the floor plan that Method Studio has, uh, has right now for the uh, Community Arts and Events Center. We believe we can uh, get something like this within our budget, but um, I want to caution you heavily. CERT construction is not weighed in on this yet. Uh, that's the main point of the CMGC process is having the general contractor in on the design. But uh, let me take a second and tell you how this is varied from the original plan. Um, this building is uh, dramatically simplified. Uh, any curved walls are taken out. The lobby has been reduced in size. The overall theater space has been reduced a little bit in size. Um, walls have been squared up. The uh, what used to be a raked floor has been replaced with a flat, uh, flat concrete floor. The um, fixed seating, uh, aisleway, and um, sound booth area has been replaced. This is a, this shows a pullout seating arrangement. So essentially, this will be a very, very flexible space. Square box, pullout seating. Uh, it'll, you know, accommodate theater performances and the space that feels like a black box space, but the seating can also be retracted to accommodate banquets, uh, events, small conventions, all those kinds of things. We've tried to keep as much functionality in the building as possible. Um, you'll notice uh, the loading area uh, remains. We've simplified that. The multi-purpose room up front remains, albeit a little smaller. Um, we want the building to be as functional, as well used as possible, and um, also uh, inexpensive, as inexpensive as possible to operate. So we've done a few things to try to 
lower the ongoing operating costs. Now, again, I don't want anyone to get too hung up on this design because our general contractor has not weighed in on this design and whether the design meets budget, but um, our architect is using this as the starting point and believes that this, this building here would uh, come within our budget. Uh, the finishes, the elevations, we're trying to keep similar to the previous design. We want to find the balance between um, something we're proud of, something that looks good, and something that enhances the civic campus area, but again, is frugal uh, in nature, very efficient and within our uh, designated budget. Um, so that's where we stand. We'll, we'll work on that um, design process between now and uh, early fall. Hope to break ground on this project very soon. And um, anyways, that, that's where this issue is at the moment. I'm happy to entertain any questions you may have. Council member Worthen. Okay. Number one, <laughs> um, what's uh, the overall square footage are we looking at? That floor plan is 12,000 square feet. Okay, um, seating? How many Remains seats? to be seen. That's gonna be determined through the CMGC process. Roundabout guess? I don't know. The old plan was 200 seats. This will probably be in that same ballpark. Okay. Um, so, as far as the theater itself goes, um, can that be, is that something, that, I'm sorry, the stage? There's no fixed stage in this design. Again, this is the simplified design, so it does not have a fixed stage. It is an open, is a, a big open space with uh, raised seating, but it won't have a fixed stage. So if, if the theater groups want an elevated platform, they'll bring those in. Otherwise, they can perform on the flat flooring. Um, if you were to do a banquet, any idea of how many people it would accommodate? I don't know. You don't have looked at tables and space? I haven't looked at any of that yet. Okay. And then, um, is anybody getting priority on booking? Or what are we going to do with making sure that it's equal time is given out? Yeah, so the, the, uh, the city has a contract with the Cultural Arts Society of West Jordan for performances, but what that contract means in terms of this building and how that might be tweaked, whether they get priority booking or not, we haven't, uh, we haven't worked any of that out yet. We have discussed um, possibilities and different pro forma models, but none of that's been fixed. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Lee? Councilmember Whitelock. So is it being built in a way that you can add things later, like could, an elevated stage and fixed seating be put in later if it, if the community arts group wanted to fund something like that on their own? Great question. If you look uh, on to my right, uh, you'll notice a long flat wall and kind of a cutoff of the lobby. It's designed that way so that the facility can be expanded over the years so that a future proscenium stage, uh, you know, what have you can all be added to this facility uh in time if this is wildly successful and we find there's more need for concert space or more need for a fixed stage that can be added on thank you all right i'm not seeing any other questions from council there thank you okay with that let's try to go back to mayor burton we'll try uh, I see you've unmuted. Mary, are you there? He messaged me that he's going to try and switch to use the microphone on the computer that he's at, but it's not, we're not hearing much of anything. I see it's gone back on mute. He was, uh, he was unmuted and his lips were moving, but we didn't hear any audio, so um, it's not working. All right. Um, okay. Well, Mayor, we'll try and come back to you a little bit later on this evening. So we'll move over to our first business item. Um, this is the water report. Council Member Jacob is the council's representative and has some information that is 
well, necessary to share from the Jordan Dollar Water Water Conservancy District. So, just, Council Member Jacob. Just before, before Council Member Jacob starts, um, so correct me if I'm wrong, because of the slide that I see, we will actually be taking comments from the public on this. Is that is that correct? Yes, uh, Utah Code 17B-1-1. 2003 includes several requirements. The report is listed as a separate item, it has to be done within 40 days of the notice. Um, and it is uh, does require just comments from the public. So if there are public here that want to speak to it, they can speak to it just to let you know the public hearing part is done at Jordan Valley Water. Correct. And I and I knew that I, I just saw that. So I wanted to make sure that the public and the council will be able to comment on this proposed tax increase tonight so that council member Jacob, when he turns into board member Jacob, then can uh, take those back to the, the board. Right. And it is the Jordan Valley board who votes on this and receives the public comment. It's just the public speaking to you. All right. We good. We good. All right. Um, so this is a, uh, a proposed property tax increase. I want to um, preface this, let you also know that we also have Dave Martin is the CFO for Jordan Valley Water, and he is here as well to answer any questions and to probably uh, fix everything I say that's wrong. Uh, I'm still very green at this, if you'll pardon the uh, sort of pun, not really. Um, but yeah, Jordan Valley Water uh, Conservancy District is proposing a property tax increase for the 23-24 uh, fiscal year budget, much like um, many other entities are. Uh, Jordan Valley Water, just to kind of give you a, a heads up, is funded in, they call it a three-legged stool, with property tax, with water uh, sales, and then with um, and then with bonding for for capital projects and things like that. So that's that's their three-legged uh, three-legged money stool. That's what I'll call it. And so this is a uh, a proposed tax increase of nine point three percent, which would raise your overall cost of water on average for by one point eight percent. It's kind of funny though if you actually do the math from last year's tax rate to the proposed tax rate it's not a 9.3 percent increase it's about a 6.8 percent increase because the county assessor proposed a lower rate instead of the same rate so that's just how truth and taxation works we all kind of know how that works um so let's see here did i cover everything on this slide i think i did it's going to generate 2.3 million dollars uh to the district out of the $98.7 million in the, of the uh, total operating budget. So I'll go to the next one. There you go. Here you see the impact uh, from the, that says current annual property tax. It should really be the county proposed property tax. And then the new annual property tax is, is the, uh, the proposed tax increase rate. So on an average, let's say $550,000 home, just to pick the number in the middle, You'd be going from uh, ninety four thirty eight, or actually last year you paid ninety six fifty to one hundred three fifteen for an eight dollar increase or a six dollar increase if you want to use real numbers. Um, and this is what it's going to pay for. It's got treatment plant upgrades and expansion, uh, new storage reservoirs, new aqueduct segment, bunch of capital improvement stuff, new wells and groundwater development, and of course debt service on those bonds. Uh, if there's any questions from the council before we open that to the public, uh, I would invite Dave to answer them. <laughs> and you can just come up to the pulpit if there's any questions. Anything from the council? All right, not seeing any lights. All right. Um, do you want to open it okay. up? To the so with that, this is not a public hearing. Uh, therefore, Anybody who'd like to speak about this particular topic, about the proposed water rate change. Again, this change is coming from Jordan Valley Water Conservancy District. Sorry, tax, not rate change. Um, but this is coming from Jordan Valley Water Conservancy District. This is uh, an entity where we do have one representative on that board, but we are not the board. We are not the one making the decision, but we are happy to hear anybody that would like to speak to this particular item. 
I do see one person who has indicated online that they'd like to speak. Uh, if you're online and you'd like to speak, please hit the button to raise your hand. Similar to before, we will have up to three minutes. Uh, before we do that, is there anybody in chambers that would like to speak? Not seeing anyone, so we will go online to Mr. Wilkinson. Let me hit the button to allow you to talk. And again, if you would please introduce yourself and then we'll start the timer for the three minutes. Mr. Wilkinson. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm Ryan Wilkinson. I, I live in West Jordan. I spoke previously uh, about the email that none of you responded to. I do have a concern about uh, any increase in taxes. And I, I would like Mr. Jacob to take this back to uh, the district or whatever it is and tell them no. We're against this. Taxes suck. I'm a little concerned that no one on the council spoke up to, to support constituents who are already being taxed to death. I mean, I'll give you a chance after I speak or hell, even take some of my, you know, take a minute of my time, I'll reserve that. But uh, why are none of you doing anything about this? I, not a rhetorical question, I'm asking you. You're just cool with with taxes increasing constantly. I, uh, you know, I. Fair question, right? I, I I don't have a degree in legal studies, so some of this might have gone over my head, but I, I'm trying to understand why the board openly supports the increase in any tax. I know you're going to say, "Oh, we need taxes to to run our government." No, you don't. I. We'll be fine without this increase. I, uh, I'm far from an expert in this area, but uh, man, you guys are so feckless. You just sit there and just, just take it. Yeah, we're cool with this. Our people will pay more. It's okay. It's not our money. Yeah, we're against it. Take it back. Take it back and report it. I'll reserve the rest of my time for anyone to rebut me. Go ahead. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wilkinson. All right, is there anybody else online who would like to speak or in chambers? Okay, any comments from council? Council member Whitelock. Yeah, I do have a question, so I'm not sure which one of you gentlemen want to answer it, but for the two new storage reservoirs, what will that do for us? Does that increase capacity that you've got? I would assume, but I want to hear from you. What's the purpose of them and what are they going to do for us? And is where are you gonna get the water to put in them? Thank you. Yes, the two new storage reservoirs, uh, one is located, well, first, um, Jordan Valley serves West Jordan as one of 17 wholesale member agencies. And so we serve uh, the whole West side and then Draper, Midvale, South Salt Lake. And uh, so the, uh, the two storage reservoirs, one is located at 5200 West, 6200 South. That would likely serve both Kearns and West Jordan. And the other is at 118 South, 7000 West. So we try to uh, strategically place our infrastructure where it benefits more than one wholesale member agency. And yes, it's to increase capacity for growing areas. Um, we also, as you'll see here, expanding the treatment plant, which, uh, and we're adding infrastructure pipelines um, to move more water throughout the valley. And these reservoirs are part of the, uh, an overall system then that uh, supports that movement of water, pressurizing. We have booster pump stations as well that help move that water to higher elevations. and. Um, we, a lot of planning goes into Jordan Valley's uh, budget setting. We have 10 year and, and beyond uh, planning of capital projects and financial plans. And so when we put together a budget, we're trying to balance um, all of these needs. And uh, we're planning to issue a hundred million dollar bond. And we have uh, debt service that then would be increasing to pay, pay back that bond. And so this tax increase goes to support overall, all of those needs. Um, we also increased water rates by 5% as well. So we're, we're 
trying to raise revenues from both water rates and taxes. So you are one of our main sources of water, which then we sell to the residents. Correct. Um, your supply of water, do you feel like you have enough for the growth that is continuing in, in the areas that you service? Yes, and, and that's where all of that long-term planning uh, comes into place. Uh, we, there's an uh, organization we've created called PREP60, which is looking out to the year 2060 and planning for water needs. We've teamed up with Central Utah Water Conservancy District and the Weber Basin District and even the Washington County District in St. George. And uh, our current supplies, um, uh, I think they're planned through about 2040, 2035 to 40. And then there's other uh, types of uh, groundwater. You'll see we're, we're developing some new wells for some groundwater. Um, the enlargement of the treatment plant is to serve, is to bring and treat water that Central Utah has developed through Strawberry, the Strawberry Reservoir, that then they've built tunnels and pipelines that will bring it to Salt Lake County. And that, um, that's our next source of water. Um, beyond 2040, there's been talks of the Bear River and, and other types of sources like that. But through the, the current boundaries of Jordan Valley, uh, we feel there is enough source water to reach build out. Okay, thank you. And just so everybody in the room knows, uh, everyone up here actually helps pay property taxes as well. So, so any increases that occur, they occur for us too. And while I personally would prefer we not have increases, I understand that infrastructure decays and you have to replace it. I understand that I want to have water because I very much want to have a toilet that flushes and I enjoy drinking it. And there are costs to that. And sadly, costs go up and that happens for everyone. But just so everyone understands, when we vote on something, it's impacting us and our families and our budgets as well. So I think all of us consider that. Thank you. So question, I have a question. It sounds, correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like most of this property tax is for capital improvement, is that correct? It supports our capital bonding. At, uh, we, Jordan Valley has a double A plus bond rating. Uh, property tax is a stable source of revenue that then rating agencies have given us a, a higher bond rating, which what that means is we have lower uh, interest rates and, and that means lower cost of water. So it goes into an overall plan, a financial strategy of, of uh, how to, how to uh, fund water. And uh, it, it, so the, the, the tax increase supports the bonding. It, it, it funds not one particular project, but uh, a, a budget that, that, that then supports all of those projects and the operations. Um, next question. If you were to not do a property tax increase, how much would you raise rates? So the $2.3 million that of revenue uh, would be about another 5% rate, water rate increase. That would, we, we raised it by five, so it'd be another five. Um, or it would mean uh, cutting some projects that our engineers have said are important to get done so we could delay projects and, okay. but yeah. And, 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 and I'm looking at your capital list, your capital projects, new aqueducts, new reservoirs, new water development, just so that everybody understands you do not, you, I'm, I'm talking about you, I'm talking about Jordan Valley Water Conservancy District, does not have the ability to charge impact fees for new development. You have to rely on current customers to pay for new development because you don't have the ability to charge impact fees. Is that correct? That's correct. Other than we have 8,500 retail customers, that, and we, do, we would 
uh, have an impact fee for a retail customer of ours. We serve some unincorporated areas of okay. the county. Yeah, okay. you you would have impact fees where you're the direct where the, where provider, the where you're the direct utility provider, yeah, but no wholesale impact fees. Right, Councilmember Jacob. Yeah, Dave, could you also? Am I right? Is it this year that we have to get the the uh, the consent? The, the, not the consent. The um, the feeling. The feeling. Uh, is the feeling or the sentiment? Sentiment. sentiment. That's the what sentiment it is. of the of the. Uh, member of the constituency board here. Okay, so with that said, having heard from three, two and a half um, of us, um, if anybody has strong opinions on this pro or against, would you please speak now? Otherwise we'll assume you're relatively neutral on this and that will be the sentiment of, the, uh, of, of this board going to that board that I will carry forward. I'll, I'll jump in. I don't know the budget, so I don't know if there are any costs that ought to be shaved, cut, postponed, anything like that. The, the, difficulty, the difficulty that I see is that we're, we're caught between a rock and a wet plate. We're, we're caught between a, we're caught between a water trap and a, and a, and a, Lake waterfall and a storm drain. Waterfall and a storm drain. There you go. Unfortunately, we need water on the west side. We all know that. There, there, there's development that that has to go in on the west side. And as you're talking about the two new storage reservoirs, we're sitting right square in between them. 118th and 62nd. I think that puts us about right square in the middle of those tanks. And we know that we have commercial development, we have residential development that is going to come, uh, whether we like it or not. Uh, we know that there's some commercial development that the city needs. And the only way to pay for that is. We either raise property taxes or we raise water rates. Uh, what I'm hoping is, is that the board will look at the budget completely and see if there are places to cut. See if there are ways that we, you don't have to go, that, so that you don't have to go all the way to the 9.3. If you can reduce that some, that would be uh, fantastic. Uh, so what you're hearing me say is I'm not completely hostile to the tax increase. I would just like a, uh, just a, a close examination to say, is 9.3 the appropriate number? Can, can you get away with five or six? Can you get away with four and a half? Uh, if, if there's some if there's some spending that doesn't need to be there, that's where I would be. But you know, if it's if it's going to build treatment plants and two new storage reservoirs and part of the Southwest Aqueduct, uh, and we always hear we don't have enough water and new ground well develop new wells, that's got to be part of the strategy uh, to to build uh, to have water for our economic for our economic growth. Um, and so I would just say, I, I'm not against the, the tax increase, but I would look at if, if there's ways to make it so that we can help uh, not being ever, you know, keep it at a smaller rate. That would be my comment. And I know I've spoken, but I'm going to say ditto to him. That's really my sentiment. Council Member Pack. Great. Thank you, Chair. Yes, to me, it's economics. If you go into public administration, you're studying the idea of striving to serve more people at a higher cost year by year. So we have to have repair to current infrastructure. You have to build new with increased cost of labor and materials year after year. Sometimes it's a downward trend in economics, but 
basically the way the world goes around is there's hopefully controlled inflation. That's the way we can hopefully retire one day that our house is worth more than when we bought it a long time ago. And we make more money as we go along. <clears throat> so if we're servicing more people and at a higher cost per individual, and we need to continue upkeeping the infrastructure and build new infrastructure, and it makes sense to do that so that we have a better bond rating, uh, so that we're paying lower interest charges. It comes down to, as Council Member Whitelock said, I, I like the flushable toilets as well, and we all want uh, water to be able to drink. If there's a better alternative, I'm open-minded. Uh, for those that are saying that there are the taxes aren't needed. If there's a better alternative, please, please let, let's discuss it. Um, there's the always the idea of would people prefer a higher fee or would they prefer a higher tax? We've gone through that conundrum with other services that we're providing in the community. I, I like how Council Member McConaughey brings up the point quite often that if it's a tax, well, you can write it off and have it be a tax deduction ultimately. So you get a little bit of a benefit there. However, uh, the word tax is not a four letter word, but treated like one sometimes, and it's easier to have a fee. So it just depends on the discussion we have. So I, I want it to be clearly known that I don't want to have to pay more taxes. And yes, as council member Whitelock said, we are residents of the city. This affects us, our families, we are paying more at the end of the day. I'm certain that people would want to have water instead of not having water and wanting that water to be clean. And, and uh, even though we're trying to have reduction measures and incentives like the flip the strip, it, it's, a, it's a tough one because we have to buy a certain amount of water, right? A certain acre feet. And if we don't use it, you'll lose it. But if we try to undershoot that and don't buy enough, then we don't have enough water. Right. So it's a delicate balance. And I, of course, defer to those who are in the position of having the education and experience and background to be able to figure that out. So we want to trust, but verify and definitely vet it. Um, and so, uh, of course, I care about uh, prices, but, but I would be in favor of ensuring that residents have water. Thank you. And then I'll just chime in. I'm supportive. Um, many of these projects directly affect West Jordan and our residents. We've been in situations before with other entities that have looked to impose taxes and we don't see any benefit at all. Um, it's frustrating when we're not seeing the benefit, but we're having to pay into it. This one, we're definitely seeing a benefit. We have some of the most potential for growth in the Valley. And I do appreciate the board's sensitivity to um, taking taking plans all the way out to 2060 and trying to do things in a financial responsible way. As I'm looking at this, it's somewhere between 56, well, 57 cents a month if we round up to a buck 70 a month rounding up uh, for something as essential to life as water. I, I can be supportive of what's being requested. Thank you. Thanks, and I'll just I'll just chime in um, as well, just to give a little more uh, clarity and context, maybe to the to the discussion as well, um, as well. <laughs> Sorry, Dirk's not even here. Um, <laughs> yeah, dry joke. Sorry. Um, now I forgot what I was going to say. Um, oh, the uh, the roughly six dollars more that uh, an average house in West Jordan would pay this year over what they paid last year is barely keeping up with last year's inflation, just to put it mildly. Um, the cost of everything have gone up. The, the water district, just like the city, doesn't produce anything. We, they don't build their own pipes that they then put into the ground. They have to buy those pipes. They don't build their own trucks to go and service places. They have to buy those trucks. Um, and, and even if you did build a truck, you'd have to buy all the parts. So inflation that we all have experienced when we go to the grocery store or anywhere else also hits taxing entities like a city or like a water board and we have to go pay more for stuff too 
now we can buy less stuff, reduce services and things like that. Now, when it comes to water, I don't think anybody wants reduced services, right? People's, yeah, people I start to look like saucers if you, if you say reducing services on water. So, so it comes, it comes with a, a, a plan. Um, also, you should know and just be aware that the legislature is looking at not allowing conservancy districts like this to special service districts to collect property tax which means they'd have to find X number of million dollars somewhere else. And, and that's gonna come from your water rates. And, and so, um, and it's not a one for one. It's not your for every dollar less you pay in property taxes, you'll pay another dollar in, in water. It, it's gonna work out differently than that. And it's not a, a fun thing to think about, but We've already got um, at the district, we've got people thinking about that and what that's going to look like and putting contingency plans in place in case the legislature does go that route. We kind of hope they don't. So um, just just to give some added color, I appreciate everybody's comments and I'll, I'll take those uh, into consideration as we as we vote on this. And I'm one of seven, nine. How many trustees are there? <laughs> I think nine. there's nine. There's nine. I'm one of nine. So I'm one ninth of the board. So my 18% will count for something. So, or 8%, 11%, 11% will count for something. That's math on the fly. All right, thanks. Thank you. All right, not seeing any other lights. We will move on. I Help move to approve consent items A and B. Second. Okay, we have a motion to approve our consent items. All in favor? Any opposed? We have to, on this one, we have to do oh, a roll do, call vote because there's a resolution. Sorry, we had skipped over our second business item and that threw me off with my notes, but let's go ahead with the roll call vote, Ms. Quick. Council Member Whitelock? Yes. Council Member Worthen? Yes. Council Member Pack? Yes. Council Member Jacob? Yes. Chair McConaughey? Aye. Vice Chair Bloom? Yes. Council Member Green? Yes. Thank you. That motion passes seven to zero. All right. We'll go to our second business item, which is Ordinance 23 18 to amend the interchange overlay zone to be consistent with the map. It was adopted back in 2021. It's been a little while since we've heard from Mr. Gardner. So let's turn the microphone over to him. Sorry. I felt like so um, quickly, uh, a couple of council meetings ago, the council asked for some changes to the proposed ordinance. I'll go through those uh, quickly. Um, if you're looking at the legislative draft, uh, line 49 and line 52, the council wanted high density, higher density uh, stricken and just add the word additional housing, which has been done. And then if you flip the page over on um, line 61, uh, the council wanted uh, the minimum of 50 acres be removed, which it has, and then some alterations to the language of uh, what it needs to be adjacent to. And so it was changed, changed to the parcel must also be adjacent to an interchange of Mount View Corridor or a major road that has access to an interchange of Mount View Corridor, which are 7,800 South 90th and 5,600 West. If you have any questions. Any questions? We've heard this one previously in a work session and modifications brought here. Council Member Green. I was just gonna say, thanks for your work on that to get this where we want it to be. Yep, thank you for the comments. All right, so if there are no questions, would there be a motion regarding uh, ordinance 23-18? I move to approve ordinance number 23-18, amending section 13-6K-4B interchange overlay zone to be consistent with the IOZ map that we adopted in 2021. Second. Motion by council member Green, second by council member Bloom. Any discussion to the motion? Seeing none, let's turn to Ms. Quick for a vote. Council Member Green? Yes. Vice Chair Bloom? Yes. Council Member Jacob? Yes. Council Member Pack? Yes. Council Member McConaughey? Aye. Council Member Whitelock? Yes. 
Council member Wordman? Yes, sorry. Thank you, that motion passes seven to zero. All right, that brings us to our council meeting wrap up with city council remarks, which I'm not going to accidentally skip tonight. Is there anybody who'd like to comment? We'll start with council member Green, then council member Bloom, then Pack. I would like to uh, express my gratitude to all the city employees, particularly because we haven't we haven't met to say this since the fourth of July. At least I don't remember. Um, oh yeah, because we did we cancel the meeting. Um, so to all those uh, city employees, and particularly the event staff and everybody else who. Uh, I know that Ashley and Sherry and Camille spent hundreds of hours uh, getting the Western Stampede uh, ready, the parade ready, all of those kind of things. A big thank you to to them, uh, to for and my appreciation for everything they did. Uh, Western Stampede was a, a great event. I know I had. I had fun uh, on, that was Saturday morning, wasn't it? On Saturday morning with council member Whitelock and I and several other people cooking pancakes and biscuits and gravy and eggs and whatever, <laughs> bacon and whatever else we did for the slack breakfast. That was, that was fun. And so thanks for uh, letting me play uh, on Saturday morning. Uh, I know there's a couple other people I'm trying to, to uh, remember to thank, and I probably forgot them. Uh, but you know, I want to, as we heard from the the fire chief, uh, the fireworks um, issue was relatively small this year again. That is fantastic, though. So, so thanks to the police department, the fire department that was out enforcing it. But <laughs> thanks to the residents for being responsible fireworks owners or fireworks shooter offers or whatever what it, whatever that's called uh thank you for for that uh and uh i'm trying there was something else that i i'll, I'll probably remember it three weeks from now and i'll i'll remember it then so uh but uh thank you and uh, appreciate all the efforts for all of our employees. They, they do a great job. It's been a minute since I've spoken. Um, I appreciate everybody on this council and for the hard work and the heart that we put into the city. Each and every one of us have passion to make our city a better place. And though we may not agree on everything, that's not a bad thing. And that is a very good thing because it helps us with our decisions that we do make to be better. Um, we, we love our city and to hear otherwise is always, we take it to heart because that's not the reality. Um, so I just wanted to give that out there that we are very passionate about what we do and we're here to make where we live a better place. And I can say that from my own perspective and what we do on the committees and, and things outside of our city council meetings. Um, I also wanna uh, thank the neighbors for um, listening to the fire department and the restrictions. And yes, there were, there's always gonna be people that don't listen and, and break those rules, but um, I'm proud of the neighborhood I live in. Um, and I appreciate them listening and understanding how important it is when we put these restrictions out, not us, but the county in general and, and how that affects where we live. And it's ultimately protecting our homes and our, our, um, our yards and our community um, at large. So appreciate it. And I just wanna say, um, Mr. Pangra, did you, did you leave? I'm going to miss him um, wherever he went. <laughs> Thanks for all his hard work and everything he's done. And again, we have an amazing staff here in the city. Council Member Pack, you're next. Great. Thank you, Chair. Well stated that there's so much that goes on behind the scenes. Understandably, there are residents and concerned constituents that zoom in and watch our proceedings. Wonderful that that occurs. There's so much that 
we do as council members in terms of other meetings and being out and about, especially in the month of July with Western Stampede. Um, so anyone that has any uh, concerns, thank you for bringing them to our attention. Different perspectives aid in having a more deliberate dialogue for different points of view. Um, we definitely do care about uh, our community. I guess that the focus of that care is what differs from person to person. Um, Chair, may I ask staff a question? I thought that we'd still be having uh, Mayor Burton present and I didn't know, we, we kind of, that, or, or that, should I just hold that for another time? That, that was my one administrative item I was gonna bring up. He briefly called and said, due to technical issues, he wasn't gonna worry about adding his report tonight. Okay. Uh, is it all right to ask uh, Mr. Lee a question? He, he might know the answer. He might sure. not. <laughs> I know that this was delegated to Mr. Uh, oh, th there, Jamie, thank or Mr. Uh, Davidson. Thank you for coming back. Did Mayor Burton uh, mention to you a couple of constituent questions about the Ronwood Park sewer installation on why that's taking a month? Uh, again, I know we have fabulous employees. It's just being able to explain to, to residents why that major thoroughfare for so many people is cut off for a month. And then the second question has to do with Ron Wood as well. Um, I, I always read the department staff reports yes. each week. And last time it was mentioned that the Sierra Newbold playground was finally finished. I didn't realize that there was anything waiting to be done. What was that? And then a companion question, how does one sign up to sponsor and get a balloon on the Sierra Newbold Pavilion, how much money is it? Where does that money go to? So it's the sewer construction and then Sierra Newbold Park, if, if you have a moment. So, so as related to the Sierra Newbold project, can I defer to the PD and to Chief Bell? Because I know they were working on that after kind of a handoff by the Exchange Club. And I know we have, uh, I know the PD has been kind of the one responsible for that. Thank you. Yeah, I think we uh, may have, may have uh, caused some confusion in our, our, our weekly report. Um, I, I believe the only uh, you know, finishing touches were there were some more balloons that needed to uh, be put on. There were, uh, there, you know, there were some sponsors that had uh, you know, donated money that have balloons with their names on them. And, and yeah, and uh, such as that. So the the last of those were affixed to the uh, the the memory wall there and and, and things. So that's what uh, was being referred to. Could you help us understand how does one go about uh, getting their being able to donate and what does that money go to? Um, I will have to get uh, back to you on that. I believe I can, I can speak I'll, to that. Oh, thank you. So going back to when the playground was under construction, there was a partnership with um, South LA Sanctuary. And in exchange for donations of certain amounts over there, they worked with the exchange club to add the balloons to the memorial. Um, that's been, it's been, I want to say five, six, seven years, somewhere yeah, in there. It's, it's been years. So I, I don't think there's still an open request for donations at this point. Okay. Um, the exchange club was the one who was handling that before uh, with Chief, Chief Diamond. Chief Diamond. Um, when that happens. So that, that kind of gives you a little fill for timeline. Great. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chief. Okay. And then the number two on the sewer line. So this, the sewer project is the result of a need to relocate a sewer line in conjunction with the wheels project. And given the timing of the anticipated construction of the wheels project, it was necessary to move forward with that sewer relocation sooner rather than later. The reason that the project is taking the time that it is, is the specifications call for burial of the sewer line at a depth of 18 feet. So a real big part of what is taking place right now is not necessarily just the laying of the line, but getting down 18 feet and shoring up the trench necessary to do the work at that depth. And so it's taking a long time to do that. In addition to that, there are several utilities that we need to cross over, or in this case, because we're 18 feet low, we need to cross under. And so that is what is taking the time and requiring um, the schedule that, that we're on. I spoke to 
uh, Carl Jessup, who's our uh, a wastewater project manager on this particular project. And I asked him, how much longer do we have? He said, we probably have about two more weeks of work that needs to take place. They're just starting. They've just entered today. In fact, I was on that. I was on site a few hours ago. They've just started entering the south part of the roundabout. And they need to obviously work their way through the entire roundabout. So that's what's taking the time, not necessarily just laying the pipe, but getting 18 feet down into the ground to lay the pipe and then doing it in cooperation with utilities that cross that trench. Great. Thank you for the explanation. There's approximately 25 or 30 families that I'm networking with that have reached out just because of the closure there. And I, I've assured them all the food truck roundup Tuesday still happens. They just need to access it from the south side. Yeah. <laughs> and, and obviously for, for safety reasons, there's there are actual boxes that we need to place into a trench. And it's, I mean, the depth of the trench even is coming close to reaching the limitations of what our backhoes and such can do. So, you know, I would, I'm not going to encourage anybody to walk onto a construction site, but if you were to walk next to and, and supervised and look down in that hole, it is a very, very deep hole and you gain kind of an appreciation for why it's taking so long. Well, great. Thank you. And certainly no complaints, just a resident's wanting explanation. I think that really helps. And thanks again for our great city employees doing fabulous work. So, thank you, Chair. Council Member Whitelock. Thank you. Um, what, first, I want to thank the candidates that have come tonight and encourage any that might be listening to come because listening to a meeting and being in a meeting are different. And I what you see on the screen is not, a, it's just not the same. So thank you for coming. Um, the other thing I want to just say is, I know that come and go is already, I know that it, it's zoned for that, it's an approved use, but I would hope that um, the executive staff could maybe work with whoever those property owners are and see if there's something more. I was actually surprised if I'm reading it right, that that the back of the building is gonna face the 8,600. Usually service stations face a road, not face a neighborhood. And I understand that the lot is divided, right? They're only using part of a little over half of that lot there, but, um, I would hope that in some way we could work with the developer to make it less of an impact for those residents. They are going to, it, it's an approved use, it's going in, but I have seen in the past fences be changed in the city. And, um, you know, maybe instead of one tree, they put another, it, that's all I'm saying is that it would be nice if the executive branch could see what you could do for those residents. Thank you. Council Member Worthen. Um, I just had a couple comments about the campaign season, I guess. Um, I, I've gotten some feedback and heard some things where we have the us against them or they're not doing so great or we can do better. I'm, I'm here to tell you there is no us and there is no them. It's just people. We're all human beings. We're all doing the best we can with the information that we have. We listen to constituents when they talk to us. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes we have to make decisions based on not a lot of feedback. Um, we hope that we make the best decisions, but we all live here. Um, we all think we can do better, and we sure can. We all learn from each other. You know, we, we learn things we didn't know before, and sometimes we think we're going to vote one way, and then we come to a council meeting and get a little bit more insight, and we're able to vote another way. But there is no us against them. There is no, I'm going to do better than you, or, you know, you're you've done a horrible job. Everybody up here has put their time in. Everybody up here did it for one reason or another. I'll tell you when I ran, I didn't have an agenda. I just wanted to leave this place better than I found it. I've lived here for 40 years. I hope that the decisions that I've made will make it better a hundred years from now. I have to sleep at night. And so when I make a decision, at least I know that I've tried, um, 
I've worked with you guys on different items. I appreciate the feedback. I've learned a lot from each one of you. I think I'm down to just a little bit over 12 meetings left. <laughs> um, but I do want everybody who's running to have a respect for each other. To have a respect that you might have a different opinion or you might think you can do something differently, but it's not about you. It's about the constituents. It's about working with the staff. It's about working with each other and having a lot of realizations that you just don't know. And I'm even talking that to the, the current ones up here because boy, we learn something new all the time and be open to that. It's really a matter of everyone, not just one person. So I encourage you all to work together with the mayor, the mayor's staff, every council person, get rid of the us against them attitude because I really hate seeing that. I had the honor to work at a local newspaper and represent a good majority of constituents throughout this county. And I will tell you, I saw some ugly races, but I will also tell you the ones that didn't throw the mud were the ones who won because that's what the constituents want. They want people that will work together and not say bad things about other people. When all you're doing is highlighting what's bad about somebody else, you don't have the time to say what's good about you. And that's all people here. They wanna hear what you can do, what you can bring to the table, not what he or she didn't do. So be positive, bring a positive light to your campaigns. Make sure you're speaking positive to each other because you don't know who's gonna win and you're gonna have to work with everybody. So be kind, focus on the positive, and just make sure you can sleep at night. That's what matters. Do, do the good. Um, I always like to give a shout out. That's how I always like to end a meeting, just because I like to end it on a positive. <sighs> Council Member Whitelock, I, I don't know how I could ever thank you enough. <laughs> I, I always joke, she's my secret mentor. I never told her that. <laughs> but... Um, when you first started running, I didn't really know you very well. And I didn't know if I liked you or didn't like you as a candidate or even a person. We just didn't get to know each other very well. Um, but I, I've just, I've admired you. You have been kind. You have a story that most people probably don't know because we don't always share our personal lives. And we all have personal lives. We all have personal struggles. We have things we're going through. But um, if I don't get to say it before I'm done, Thank you. Thank you for everything you've taught me. Thank you for, for answering the phone, for being there when I have questions that are seem simply stupid. <laughs> but hey, you don't know, you don't know, right? So I appreciate all of you. Um, but Council Member Whitelock tonight, I just wanted to thank you personally for everything you've done. All right. The only thing I will say is, uh... Thank you and good job to my little guy who wants some dad time tonight. He came to city council, kept Mr. Clegg in line the entire meeting. That is not an easy job. Well done, Holly. With that, I'd look for a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We stand adjourned. <laughs>